I think there are more, like, almost first time and unique features on this RV than I've ever seen before. The thing is, it's not really a toy hauler. Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd of Vicious RV down here at Forest River today getting my first look at an expansion of the View series, this new 30BC View. It's like a wombo combo amalgamation of a Wildwood FSX Max, their V series, and the View series all put together in one crazy combination. And it's got about an acre of window coverage over on the campsite of the RV. It's got these cool little like buffet sort of serving stations on it. It has a ramp patio in the back. It does have an area that you could sort of park stuff inside, but I don't know that this really reads as a toy hauler to me. It's just an RV that you happen to be able to park some stuff in if you are so inclined. It's got a, just a whole bonkers uh, complement of weird, wacky stuff, like a, I think, a 100-inch flat screen that drops down out of nowhere to give you absolutely awesome viewing on this sucker. So you either have, uh, like, a National Geographic view of outside, or you could just literally watch National Geographic inside your view. <laughs> it's got seven-foot ceilings, which offers some just nice, big, open, comfortable space, uh, which is really handy for someone like me when I'm standing in the shower. Um, the kitchen has an island or a peninsula, whatever you want. Then there's this hidden middle bonus room. These views seem to be doing a lot of this hidden stuff where it could be a bunkhouse, but it doesn't have to be. It could be an office. It also has a side load cargo door with a deadbolt. So if you just want to be able to load stuff in that other than the garage, you've got all kinds of crazy different cargo options and opportunities on this thing. Up front in the bedroom, uh, you've got their uh, VersaTilt power bed lift system as well as uh, a bonus closet with removable shelving that could house a uh, washer dryer combo unit if you're so inclined. Underbelly's enclosed, forced air, heated, insulated, uh, with a radiant barrier. Um, insulation and radiant are technically two different things. Sorry about that. Uh, 200 watt solar package on the roof and a bunch of other stuff. Let's get in here. She's crazy. She's wacky. She's fun. I want to hear what you have to say about it. Now, along with just the host and myriad of really unconventional qualities, like people have been saying, you know, I'm tired of seeing the same old thing and I'm agreeing with them. I've been doing this for a long time. I've seen the same old thing for a while. Um, I want to mention this is based off the um, FSX Max series of haulers, which means it's like seven foot tall. And uh, they've been doing, they've done some very, very interesting things over here. First of all, you notice on the back uh, off this ramp patio, you've got like the three seasons patio wall. So you can close that thing off if you want to. What's cool about that is it allows you to leave this down for like patio deck mode and not have to flip the ramp up every single night. You can just kind of close the doors and lock and latch them in place and uh, call it good. You can pop it in place and lock it. Um, kind of like my, uh, my kneecaps every time I start squatting down nowadays. But they don't call it a view for nothing. Uh, <laughs> this basically, this whole wall was essentially based off their destination trailer that kind of started the whole concept, the 42 view. And they came out with that thing and everybody and their brother lost their minds and they realized there was something here. Now let's get this right out of the way. If you are camping in crazy sun country, it might be a problem. Now the windows are tinted and it does have a 15,000 BTU air conditioner to help. Um, you know, there's some things like there's some radiant barrier work that goes into these FSX models, but on a really hot day, I, I could see it being a problem in some regions. So I, I just hope you appreciate me shooting you straight on that. Like if you're a Texas, Arizona kind of camper, it might be a bit of an issue. Now this over here is deceptive looking. At a glance, it looks like one of those L-shaped, um, well, you have to say chaise lounge. You can't just call it a chase lounge like some Midwestern American, but that is actually a free floating a uh, little storage ottoman footrest kind of wombo combo. It's actually on rollers, which is really nice for moving around this carpetless, ventless floor. And that is a, uh, a, a three-seat theater sofa. Now, the middle section is not a recliner. The, uh, the two armrest sections are, but the middle section is a drop-down armrest. And as you may have kind of gathered from our floor plan and a flash footage, they're doing something here people have been asking for for years, but just there's never been a real great opportunity to do it. They are standardizing a little projector setup with a sound bar above it in here, which I think is very different and very, very cool. Um, it, uh, we're, we're going to get that whole projection screen open in just a minute, but like if you look at this, this has all these 
uh, like blackout shades if you want to, you know, blot the sun down. These are actually power drop shades uh, themselves right here, which I think is uh, very, very cool. So, you know, with a push of a button, you can kind of select, you know, which windows you want um, closed off. Like, what if you've got the sun kind of high in the sky here? You can sort of close that off and keep the bottom open a little bit, you know. But you've got a second layer of it here. That's a drop-down projector screen. And with all these black roller shades behind it, you're going to get a really solid picture on that sucker. Now, back here... You've got these uh, little kind of director's chair kind of things. I, I, I think those might be more intended for like the, uh, the kitchen counter, but you're going to see all that in just a minute because this can be an island. It can be a, a mega island. It can be a peninsula. It could be a little bit of anything you want it to be. And one of the other things that's kind of cool is they put a motion sensor on the rear patio tailgate lighting. So if you're chilling out here in the evening hours, as long as you're moving around, it'll light up. Now, what, what is interesting to me is how there's some household and USB outlets outside here. And you can close that three seasons wall. Like if it's lightly drizzling overnight, you have you have exposed electrical. I think you might want to close that. Uh, that. That just might be a little thing you want to kind of think about and consider. Now, you've obviously, for privacy's sake, you've got the curtains that you can pull right here. But I uh, I, I think I've, I've waited long enough. Here's what I want to do. I want to sit down in the theater seat and just give you the full on, uh, well... I mean, no pun intended, view and effect of this thing. Beginning with, of course, the power drop uh, projection screen right there. It, it, it's, just, it's just really cool seeing some new concepts, some new technology, some new fun stuff like this come into the RV industry. And uh, that is a, it's like a 100 inch projection screen. So that is way bigger than any TV you were probably ever going to put in an RV. And it's there when you need it. It's gone when you don't. That's what's brilliant about this. Everything in this RV has at least two functions. It's the whole Versa concept that you find in the St. Louis Wildwood family, even over here in FSX. Now, our kitchen counters are all solid surface. That is a 12-volt DC compressor fridge. I do want to mention that giant TV that you're looking at in the kitchen. That is there for display purposes. That is not included with the RV. And some people were asking, why do I need you know, a TV and a projection screen? I don't know that you do, but it is possible. They still wired it up if you want a traditional TV setup, because I believe the projector, you might need some kind of Wi-Fi system going on to, uh, you know, you have to have a shared Wi-Fi kind of network to broadcast something like stream it off your phone, basically, like uh, Chromecast or whatever kind of situation, you know, like uh, Apple AirPlay uh, sort of uh, jobs. Now, Again, this countertop, it can be as big or small as you want it because obviously when all this folds up, this would also be your loading space in here, which is why you have a, uh, a half dozen 2,500 pound rated tie downs. And what we are walking on is 5 8 tongue and groove plywood. Now over in the kitchen, you don't have a traditional propane oven. You have a uh, uh, microwave air fryer combo, which I think is kind of nice. And this year they have upgraded to uh, wood slide fascia instead of plastic. It's just nice little detail touches. What I haven't looked at, what kind of, oh, good. I was wondering like, what kind of kitchen power outlets do we have over here? Um, what's your opinion on this? They gave us a big chunk of counter space with appliance outlets here, but they pushed this thing all the way against the wall. Should they have centered this up? and then given us small drawers on either side, or is it better to have it off to the side and have the big drawers like this? I think no matter what, you're gonna please one person and cheese off the next. It's pleasing and cheesing, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> now there is a full privacy shade in the entry door. And I mean, look at this, the entire campsite of the RV, even through the hallway is windows, but you might notice like this is an exceptionally long hallway. You're like, why do I have to go all the way up here to get to the bathroom? And that's the thing, if you back up a little bit, you might notice this little guy right here. It's a hidden Dutch door style room. So it's all like on a magnet catch, uh, as you can see there. And I kind of wanted to, to, to slap it so that you could see that that does close up. This is yet another multi-function space that you get with this RV. One of the things that I like is they actually included its own, um, albeit four inch small fan, but vent fan into this room. This could be a bunkhouse. It could be an office. And look at how they actually set this up. If you want a multi-monitor setup, you can go to town on this sucker. And you've got a little side mount cargo door right there that does deadbolt for security. And you're going to see that that little platform drops down uh, to create like a little working desk space. So it can be on the road cargo. It could be a dog kennel. It does have central air ducted in here so you can stay comfortable. But of course, you can fold this stuff totally up out of the way 
or you could fold the bunks down as needed um, to, uh, again, kind of convert the space to whatever you need be, whether you want that desk function, you want an office, you want a little private den. Uh, I mean, whatever you're looking for, this little thing could be a little bit of anything, which I think is fairly cool. Now, the ceiling's very tall, so someone might look at it and say, yeah, but I, they got the peekaboo, I smell you doors. Well, um, I don't know anybody who's tall enough to peek over that thing, uh, unless you got one of those Navy SEAL endoscopy uh, cameras. I don't think it's going to be too much of an issue. I'm kind of um, on board with this trend of a mirror on the wall with like a medicine cabinet beside it, although this one doesn't really have enclosed medicine cabinet space. That's something to kind of consider. The um, toilet space over here kind of surprised me in not the best way possible. Like, I sat down on it at first. I thought, this is great. And then I started banging my elbow uh, kind of against the wall. It feels like the toilet needs to get, like, turned or angled or something like that. I've seen a couple of these FSXs that have run into that. It feels like something that they could probably easily fix. We could probably tweak it at the dealership level. So don't let that really be a uh, deal breaker for you. But that seven-foot ceiling translates to awesome headroom up in the shower. And I love these... Um, extra LED lights that a lot of brands are starting to put in the showers now. Now, Brinkley RV wasn't necessarily the first manufacturer to do that, but they really seem to be kind of one of the first in the total industry to do it. And now a lot of people are jumping onto it. There's a sticker down here I want to clarify. It says king size bed. I think that that sets a specific expectation. And what I like to do in my videos is provide clarity, candor, and transparency, which are all nice little synonyms. But it is a, it's basically an Olympic queen. The RV industry likes to take a lot of liberties with bed sizes. It is a 66 wide by 78 long, essentially Olympic queen, not quite technically. But you can, um, you could put a normal, probably true queen in its place. Now, this is not a folding bendy bed, but the um, this has the, the power actuator. They call their versatile bed. It actually just kind of sandwiches the bed in the, little, in the middle. Now, that might make a little bit of a crease spot. So that's something you're going to want to kind of consider. Nothing says you have to use it in that form, by the way. Now, uh, this overhead cabinet doesn't have any kind of struts or anything like that, but there is storage up there. You've got your hanging storage on either side. There's still full, full storage going on underneath the bed. Um, and, and you see how they're, they've just gone crazy. They went ham with all these uh, little cube organizers. Across from the bed, though, that is removable and or adjustable shelving. It can be an extra closet. It can be uh, a washer-dryer combo prep space. There's a lot of things you can do with it. And what's kind of wild here, there's two sets of TV prep plugs in this. I have to believe that maybe, because this is a prototype, that was something unintentional. I, I would not be surprised. And again, keep in mind, with this being a prototype, there will undoubtedly be a couple little um, tweaks and changes before it goes into final full production. So uh, take this video with a grain of salt. This is here to give you an idea. It's a guide, not a Bible. And of course, looking at it in road mode here, it almost makes me wonder now that I've seen this, if there's not room in this lineup for a version of this with no slide, you'd have to get rid of the island. But uh, I mean, if you look at this, it looks like a fully functional RV, even with the slide close, which is kind of cool. And once again, you do have those curtains on the rear wall right there, uh, you know, for a little bit of privacy time, whether, it, you know, it's daytime, nighttime, whatever the case may be. Uh, there, there is a, a little caveat that I want to offer you on this one. Not being a traditional toy hauler doesn't do traditional toy hauler things. Yes, you could load stuff in it if you want to, but that whole wall moves. There is no ability to do like a happy jack power bed lift system. This whole wall is windows. It is what it is. They are the way they are, how you see them. Um, again, they might tweak a little bit before they go into production, but major structural changes like that will not happen here. This is how they're probably going to look. Now let's talk weights, measures, and towing. Um, the model number, you start hearing a 30, you start thinking, oh, can I half ton it? No, I, I don't really think so. Because again, the base core shell structured DNA of this is one of their um, FSX Max toy haulers. She's, she's big. Like, you know, they, they have a focus on uh, more cargo carry capacity. Now there's obviously like 400 flags in the way here, but we're not gonna let that stop us. Just uh, use your Superman X-ray vision. We can peek through that a little bit. Um, working our way up for here. Uh, I wanna mention a quick note. We're looking at a, uh, a Salem edition of this today. Salem and Wildwood, literally the same thing. 
Uh, one has like orange stickers, one has blue stickers. That is just about it. We're gonna come back to this compartment door in just a second on the way through. Our uh, black tank flush, tankless on demand water heater. And it does look like there are dual sewer outlets. Now this being an early prototype, I'm about to march right over and mention this to them. If there's any way they could possibly plumb that together, I'm gonna suggest it, but they might not be able to. I don't know all of the engineering in terms of what's going on under the belly of this beast. And again, remember we got this, uh, you know, cargo, bunk office den multifunction hidden room makes my inner child go squee we we have a guest uh, sorry about that sir i won't report you to the fbi <laughs> and in case you're wondering um i mentioned there was ducted air there is ducted heating into that middle room as well speaking of ducted heating let's get down on the ground uh take a look under the uh, belly here you won't see much because it's enclosed with their sectionalized accessibility but there is a radiant barrier under there. It is forced air heated, and they do have holding tank heaters as well. Now, black flush, um, tankless on demand water heater. Did I talk about those? I can't tell. I have done like 400 million billion zillion videos, rapid fire here, and to say that it is blending together is a bit of an understatement. Now, this mattress you're looking at has nothing to do with this RV. This is actually out of an RV that is next to this one, and they just kind of wanted it out of the way, so they put it in here. But you're actually getting to see that you could stuff a big mattress down here and have a literal mother-in-law suite. You also see the actuator for the uh, VersaTilt bed up there. And that little black plug is our uh, side mount prep plug for a portable solar panel. You've got 200 watts of solar factory standard on the roof, 30 amp controller, so you should be able to probably at least double that solar, maybe a little more. I don't know the exact wiring gauge and total top end capacities that they have here, but you could expand on that. Plus, you've got the uh, portable option. And I'm really loving, it's unintentional, we're in this display, I'm loving all these kind of coolers right here because it really looks like we're camping, man, you know? Now, um, with all the windows, it does get a little bit tricky on awning space, but there's enough sidewall uh, room here that overall, I don't think it's too awful terrible. Another cool thing is these are easy tilt awning arms. Uh, with just two fingers, you can tilt them down or just, you know, grab it and push it back up. But if you leave it tilted down like this and then close the awning, it'll sort itself out and nothing will get pinched or damaged. Jumping over to the other side here. Just let me, let me give you a shot all the way down the awning just to give you a bit of a look at all the patio space. And again, all the windows. Now, these are forced fiberglass because uh, this is a stick-built camper. Just, like, maybe you weren't aware of that. Um, this series is stick-built, and most of the time, Salem's and Wildwoods have a tin skin with a fiberglass option. But because of all the window coverage, um, they force their fiberglass because their fiberglass option includes tinted windows to help keep the sunshine out. So it's kind of a knee bone to leg bone, everything sort of related to one another uh, kind of thing. Um, again, you got that uh, kind of three seasons wall uh, going on back there. They don't come with any sort of steps off the back from the factory, but it definitely looks like a, a set of those could be applied. Now it's a 3,000 pound loading ramp with a 1,500 pound patio limit. One of the other things that's kind of nice here is you do have the better quick drop stabilizers because this thing is pretty big. You know, you might have a whole kind of block party going on inside of it and uh, you want to make sure that it's going to not wiggle jiggle all over the place. Well, you can do that here. You've also got yourself that propane uh, cooker hooker quick connect. Our speakers are mounted down low where they're not blowing away the neighbors with your free bird freedom rock. And it comes with a pair of these little you know what this almost reminds me of? I'm, I'm gonna kind of date myself a little bit, but my little sleepy hometown actually does have an old school traditional drive-in where they come hook the trays onto the side of your window. And uh, you know, they bring the burger out to you on roller skates and play the doo-wop music. It's a really fun place to go. It's called Shorts Root Beer Stand. If you ever come visit my hometown Coldwater Michigan store, make sure you check that out. Now I've done a bunch of these different view models. They're all completely unique from anything else I've seen, including, generally speaking, one another. The 24 and the 29 view, very similar, obviously, but, I mean, what do you say to this thing? This is, is different. It's, it, I think that's the one word we can all agree on. It's different. Whether it's good, bad, ugly, or in between really remains up to you. I hope you've appreciated how I went out of my way to kind of share some of those facts and facets for you here. Of course, I'll leave you a link in the description to check for pricing and availability, whether you're curious or whether you're serious, and you're short of that. <laughs> Can't wait to see what I find here next. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.